Coming back from a trip to Cambridge, I had a few frames left on the roll of Fujifilm Color C100, which I went on to complete after arriving back in London. This was one of the very last shots I made in Cambridge, featuring a bent sunflower right next to its friends, which were happily bathing in the sun. After taking that photo, I then went forward to take a closer look at it. It was kind of a sad scene, but also a very pretty one. light was quite intense that afternoon, which cast a rather defined shadow on the walls at a car park. I tilted my camera until I thought I've got a balanced composition while setting the focus on the shadows on the vertical wall. Something about this car looks kind of strange. It was covered in dirt on every side and was parked deep into some overhanging plants. I did have an idea in my head how I would want the final image to turn out, but I wasn't quite sure if I had shot from the very best angle. So I moved my position slightly, basically to crop out the car next to it, and to really fill the frame with the dirt, the frame of the car, and the plants. Interesting pattern, I thought. And it's a nice house too. I played with the angles until I was happy with how the light and the shadows we're alternating, well, kind of, set the focus on the nearest wall and took a shot. Since being in the UK, I am amused every day by people's creativity in relation to household plants. These tiny twigs that just stuck out from the pot were basically begging for a photo. Photographing ice cream fans is tough. It is tough to fight the temptation to just get an ice cream myself instead of photographing these people getting theirs. As I mentioned earlier, I got this roll of 100 partly because of the Cambridge trip though I didn't manage to finish the entire roll, but I didn't actually intend to get the 100 version of the Fuji color film. I was instead thinking of the color 200. I've previously done videos talking about it and so I have a good understanding of how that film would perform. And also, I ideally want an ISO 200 to go with my point and shoot, which is the Olympus XA. I think it will give me a good compromise between the film speed and also the grain. However, unfortunately, because of various, you know, obvious reasons, the supply chain for film stocks are pretty messed up nowadays. The closest thing that they had in stock was the color 100 and so I just had to run with it. All this time, while I was shooting on the C100, I assumed that it would behave similarly as the C200. I basically saw it as a 100 ISO version of 
the C200, which to my utmost surprise was totally not the case. When I got my scans back, I was so shook. It has mostly to do with the color signs and so let's talk a bit more about that. Overall, not only is there an absence of the green tint, which alone is very surprising, the colors actually turned out very well balanced and very pronounced. In these few shots of the ice cream truck, the reds were so saturated and so bright as if it was popping out from the photo. This is definitely not something you would typically expect of a Fujifilm stock. Observing the greens, I think overall, they look a bit more muted than they actually were. And I think that has to do with the way that the yellows are being suppressed in the emulsion. Taking away the yellows in the greens so that anything that's green would appear to be on the bluish side, which is a pretty consistent observation that I have across the set of images. As I've explained in my previous POV videos, done on a roll of C200 and also a roll of Superior 800, which unfortunately or fortunately has been discontinued, the green in the frame was overwhelmingly much for my liking. So in this instance, I must say that I really like how the greens are turning out. In relation to the blues though, it could be somewhat an issue depending on what you're photographing and how intense the light was. For instance, let's take a look at this frame where we see a plane flying in the sky. I mean, this was kind of an extreme case and I think it wouldn't be fair for us to conclude that the blues are a bit too exaggerated on this film just based on this frame because I was basically pointing the camera into the sky. But even where you're making a photo of everyday objects, say people, landscapes, stuff like that, there is a very realistic chance that a huge part of the frame is going to be made up of the sky. And so this is something you would definitely want to pay attention to when shooting on this film. Based on the stuff above that I've noticed, I started to get really curious about this film because it's just so not typical of what Fuji is known for, aka the washed out colors and most notoriously the greenish tones. So I did some research and dug up other photos that were also from the color 100. The point is to find out whether or not it's just me or my lab or do the colors indeed render like this generally. So I dug up photos from Flickr, from Lomography that are tagged with C100 and what I found was really interesting. The majority of the photos was nowhere close to the results that I've got. This is especially apparent with frames that are somewhat underexposed or shot under relatively less intense sunlight. The colors in these frames looked way less saturated, more washed out and also less contrasty, which is a look that I would say is more typical of Fuji. In my opinion, what this tells us is that Fujifilm Color 100 is designed to give really good results under intense sunlight. It gives a really well balanced and somewhat cinematic look to the photos when taken under broad daylight. This obviously is a massive caveat because more often than not, you don't get this strong sunlight every day, depending on where you are, of course. Though this is definitely something that's worth noting. Overall, while the C100 might not be the most versatile and flexible film designed for professional use, which would render well-balanced results under all sorts of situations for the purposes of leisure and vacation snapshots type of thing, I would definitely go for it. As always, all the shots will be lined up in the end of this video. Thanks so much for watching and I will see you in the next video. Bye!